T-shirt. However, some like their politics hot, and if they do, they buy this magazine. This is Class War. It's currently celebrating 10 years of promoting confrontation as a legitimate way of changing our society. One of his editors, uh, his editors rather, editors is what they have in the Communist Party, is in the building and about to confront me now. Please welcome Mr. Ian Bowden. I thought you were going to come up from over there. So, uh, Ian, what is, what is Class War? It's a very popular tabloid newspaper, which most people don't get to see because we can't sort the distribution out. It basically says that the rich, the Tories, the Labour Party, they're all against us. We should get up off our knees and fight back against the bastards. The, the voice of reason, kicking off there. Um, now, when you say they're against us, uh, who do you mean? Would I be including this us? Is it everyone? Is it a generic us or is there a specific us? I you think, Jonathan, that you're basically a working class boy who's come from his working class roots, made good, got himself some nice clothes. There's nothing wrong with that. We want working class people to want the best. They shouldn't want to wallow in poverty like the left wants. Yeah. Wallow in poverty. <laughs> oh, we're so fucking, oh, oh. we're so oppressed and so on. <laughs> Best for working class people. Class war gives you humour, yeah. gives you a sense of living, not a slight load of wallowing in misery and so on. Class war is where it's at. Read the paper! So this day we're talking about is a positive message for working class people to what, take control of their own lives? Yeah, I mean what do we see in this country at the moment? We see Labour, Tory, spot the difference. Kinnock, Major, no difference. Anyone under 30 or under 35 is going to see no difference between Labour Tory at the next election. They've been in power, no democratic change. It's totally impossible. We're saying there is an alternative, an alternative which says working class people can take control of their own lives, get rid of all these shit houses who dominate us, parasites on our backs. We can get rid of them. We are getting rid of them in our daily lives and we will do. So Ian, you're saying you're getting rid of them, uh, but you're not saying we should vote people out. You're presumably saying other things. So what, uh, first of all, how would people replace what we have at the moment and, and then what would be in its place? Democracy in this country at the moment means putting your cross on a ballot box every five years between John Major and Neil Kinnock. I mean, what change does that make? There's no difference at all between those two. There's no difference at all, at all in their politics. We're saying a fundamental bottom-up change where working-class people really take control of their own, their own lives. The left is down the shit shoot of politics, right? They've the collapse of Leninism, the collapse of Bolshevism, they're nowhere near. We're saying our politics are real, they mean everything to people in daily life. We can do, go and do it. I don't want to be boring, but if we're going to can you, can you just moderate the language a tiny bit? Because it's, it's, it's kind of, just say down the chute, that would do, we get the message. Um, now, now, let me ask you, because a lot of people might think, yeah, you're, you're talking sense here. They might say, yes, there is maybe well, the two-party sense. sense. Not well, a lot of people might think, you think I'm talking sense. Well, some of what you say I think you make is sense, but some of it I find, you know, quite offensive, frankly. It's like this thing, you bought out this calendar, which is hospitalised copper calendar. 1992. Now, now, which now, sells, I might say, 200,000 copies. So if everyone's so in favour of the cops, how are we selling 200,000? But you see, you're saying you're in favour of working class people, and, and the majority of the police force are working class men and women. They're out there doing a job, and many of them, I'm sure, have entered the force because they think, I want to do something positive, I want to put something back into the community. And, that's what, and here you are, you're holding them up for ridicule. You actually, it seems to me, inciting people to attack the police in your journal. Most people's experience of the cops isn't some sort of rosy faced Dixon and Doc Green type who goes around cuffing someone on the shoulder of a nick in a rosy apple or something, right? Their experience of the cops is they ride round in riot vans all day, they can't walk anywhere. If they're so popular, how come they can't walk around on their own anymore? They turn up five days after your house is burgled and so they can't do nothing about it, right? They kick shit out of you on a Saturday night in a cop station and fit you up in a magistrate's court on a Monday night. That's the reality of the cops. This rosy-faced view of the cops which the media tries to pull over is a total... It's not a rosy-faced view. I'm just saying these people are doing their job. They're out there, they're working hard, they're doing their job. And there might be things you might not like the fact that they stop people rioting, but a lot of us feel that's a good thing. I don't want to see people rioting. I don't well, want to you see personal property Your brother, smashed. Paul Ross, yeah. right, went on telly on Crime Monthly after the poll tax riot in Trafalgar Square and grasped up the poll tax <laughs> rioters, right? He appeared on television. He got, said... Are we out of time? Paul Ross said... He will grasp up the poll tax rise and he grasped them up. 
And you see, you should be having. We don't a... forget that kind of thing in a working class. Paul Ross, your name is up. You should be having a. You, you should be having that conversation with him, not with me. But well, I, you're I, doing, I, I don't get a chance to go with him, but I'm working on it. I still don't think you've answered what I said there, but unfortunately, such a nature of these shows, we're out of time. Maybe we can continue this conversation well, another let's time. Let's hope so. Two minutes wasn't enough. Was it, it wasn't a It was more than two minutes. You've got thanks, at least two and a half. But thanks for Cleveland Class for the first ever time to get on telly, and we'll have another go. Don't worry. Thank you very much, Mr. Ian Bowen, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming on the program, Ian. That's it, I've had enough. I'm going to get right here right now. Join me Friday when we have Mr. James Brown on the programme. See you then. <laughs>